All right, welcome back to another touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to create this kind of structure that you can see in the background. <coughs> and it's based on the idea of uh, cellular, cellular noise. I'm not going to say that again because I can't really pronounce it. <laughs> and um, if you Google that thing, then uh, you find these kind of <coughs> images here. And this is quite close to what we're seeing uh, here in the background. And um, so this is using instancing to create this effect. But you can also um, achieve this with, uh, like usually you'd, you'd approach this with uh, GLSL or there is also an approach of Paqueta 12 using um, just tops. So that's definitely more efficient. Um, check check that out for sure. But um, this is, uh, yeah, this isn't as like versatile in the effect that you can get out, um, but it's also not as complicated. <coughs> so, um, as always, I'm going to uh, rebuild this whole network with you now, and I'm also at the end going to show you a nice little trick to um, make this 3D-ish looking and uh, without it being actually 3D. All right, so um, I'm going to delete all of this and leave this ramp here for reference and we're going to start with a sphere here so I'm gonna drop a sphere in here and change the primitive primitive type to NURBS um, and yeah leave everything as is and I'm just gonna attach a transform here and change the uniform scale to 0.1 so we have a smaller sphere there to work with and then I'm going to attach this to a geometry and on the instance page turn instancing on and we're gonna get back to that in a second so now I'm gonna drop the camera here and change the z-axis to point, uh, 1.5 and um, also drop a light in here and not change anything about that um, now I'm also gonna drop a render in here and call that uh, no, not call that anything, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and um, yeah, we're going to get back to this as well and I'm going to do all the post stuff before we get to the actual instancing part so I'm going to drop, going to drop a null here at the very end, call that PG as always um, drop a transform before that with the alpha set to 1, background color on and a level in here and we're gonna do some po post processing on that later so I also want to use a lookup here to uh, change the colors later whoops so we're gonna attach a ramp to this and I really love working with this it's uh, it's very powerful I noticed uh, the last weeks so I'm going to show you how to use that nice way there so um, now we're going to get to the instancing part <coughs> and we're going to use a noise, two noise chops to drive both the position and the scale of the spheres. So um, before I do that actually I'm going to drop a Fong material here as well. Put that on there and turn the blending on here, <coughs> turn the specular off and put all the diffuse to one so we have this kind of looking torus there all right so now I'm gonna drop a noise chop in here and call the channel names TX and TY because we're gonna use these as position X and Y now we want to be able to say how many spheres we are actually instancing so we do that with the start and end here so I'm going to select samples here on on the drop down and just leave the end to be 599 so in total we have 600 um, samples here so 600 spheres um, <coughs> I am going to just copy and paste this and on the second one change this channel name to size and now on the first one I'm going to change the amplitude to 2 <coughs> and um, 
also I want to animate this. So apps time dot seconds times like point one. I can s barely see it, but this is actually changing in time. So <coughs> um, also what I want to do on this one actually is um, if I go to the channel pages uh, page on both ones. Uh, on the first one, I'm going to right click on the end here, say copy parameter, because um, I want uh, this to have the same sample system as always. So when I change this, um, I'm actually going to do something and say past bind here. So now what I can do, I'll change the uh, number of samples in both of them, and they're going to change each other. So if I put this to like 499, this now is also 499. So that's a really nice way to be able to control that. And um, now I'm gonna uh, attach a null Oops. Um, here and a math and a null there. So <coughs> on this math now, I'm like on the on the noise two we oh, whatever um, on the math here we just need to change this to like minus one and one. And we want to change this to like 0.5 and 1.5. So this is just mapping the noise values here to the sizes 0.5 and 1.5. So <coughs> now we're using this uh, on the geo as a translate OP and the other one as a scale OP. And now I'm going to just pick the corresponding values here. So TX and TY. And you can see this warm being created there. And um, now I'm gonna go to the scale X and select size and on the scale Y as well. <coughs> and on the noise one, I'm actually going to change the period to 0.1. So we have this kind of field and now you can see they're moving as well. So now what I uh, generally would recommend to you is uh, if you're working with SOPs, uh, it's not really important for uh, any other operators as far as I know. Um, maybe turn it off the materials as well but mostly for SOPs um, just select them and say viewer off so now right now it's at like 45 FPS and if I turn this off it goes straight to 60 because uh, if, if these are on then they have to like be rendered uh, separately um, to for you to just be able to view them there but you don't need to do that all right, so now you already um, see here in the render, if I just uh, go here and turn this, um, <coughs> this display on, we can already see the effect uh, taking place in the background there. So uh, this is very nice. Um, now we can change the colors to really dive into that. So what we're going to do here is um, change this last one here and just, yeah, just actually leave it there and um, change it to a darker color like a dark blue and I'm just gonna insert another one here that's like a light blue and now we get this um, kind of effect that I showed you earlier <coughs> so that works uh, very nicely um, so a couple of things now um, when I when you look closely here sometimes you can see like right now you can barely see it but sometimes you can see that these spheres these spheres are uh, not that high quality and they like not that many uh, rows and columns like so not that many whatever <laughs> polygons in a way I don't know how it works with nerves to be honest so I could just crank these up but then you can see this instantly goes down so um, yeah there's a couple of things uh, to go about this. So one would be to change the right. So I want this to be back. Uh, change the orientation to Z, and um, so now that that fixes it because I guess you can see the sphere from another angle. So you don't really have these problems. Also looks a bit different though. Um, another. Um, thing you can do is what I generally what's generally nice to do to like get closer to the image that I showed you in the beginning is to just like blur this here a bit um, 
if you want to do that. Uh, I don't right now. So, um, all right, another thing I can show you is to, like if you go on the detail, you can turn off the compute normals and then you get this very different looking thing. So, uh, more more like, yeah, really 2D-ish uh, than 3D-ish. <laughs> So that's also a nice thing to do. Okay, and now something that I uh, found out no, before we get there also on the phone. We've turned blending on here. Now we can change the alpha here to also get some, some interesting results that don't really have to do a lot with cellular, cellular noise anymore, but um, it still looks cool. All right, so the last thing that I uh, really like doing, uh, discovered earlier, is um, that you can just go to the render and change the render mode to fisheye. So this doesn't look very nice at first, but now you can add a transform here and on the scale X change this to like 0.6 and then on a geo change the um, uniform scale to like 7 and um, then you can just um, go into noise and maybe make it a bit less even quite a f quite a lot less um, uh, spheres or just make them smaller on the map here so whatever floats you boat there so that's a really nice uh, effect kind of looks like this ball of eyes and um, makes for an easy sphere 3d effect which without, uh, without actually um, having to use displacement or something so that's really cool as well and um, yeah, uh, as I said, you can you can use blur to like get get different results that works better without the three D uh, effect. Actually, curious how this looks without the normals. Not very good. <laughs> so for this one, normals are quite useful. I can change. Yeah, you can as always. You can like play around with this and really um, tr get your hands on the on the ramp here because uh, yeah as you can see you can just drop in different kind of colors here and get really nice results very easily so I love uh, playing with that all right um, so since uh, like corona is going on <laughs> I'm trying to uh, record more tutorials for this time so we, so we all have something to do and um, <coughs> uh, also, if you want to have like the the video files, like the files of my videos, um, my projects, then you can support me on Patreon and then you can download them there. Or uh, you, c you also get some uh, exclusive tutorials and files there and wallpapers. <laughs> All right. So um, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you very soon.